It's over 9,000! What? 9,000? You want to talk about iconic? It doesn't get more iconic than that. In the first two major story arcs of Dragon Ball Z, scouters and power levels were a common theme, and since then, a huge portion of the Dragon Ball fan base have become borderline obsessed with power levels, long after Akira Toriyama dumped them as a plot device. So this edition of Dragon Ball in Depth is all about power levels, where they come from, what they mean, and most importantly, do they even matter? この放送はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Even in the early, early days of the Dragon Ball fandom on the internet, before Saiyan Island, before Kanzenshu, before even YouTube existed, there were hundreds of Dragon Ball fan sites in all kinds of different languages, and many of them claimed to have authentic, real power levels, when in reality, it was all speculation and fan made fictitious bullshit. Even to this day, there is so much misinformation about power levels that it's impossible to avoid. A lot of this misinformation isn't even from people in the United States. Latin America and even Japan have contributed to this debacle. Let's get one thing out of the way right now off the hop. The very last mention of power levels in the canon Dragon Ball manga was manga chapter 331 when Future Trunks' power level was read by one of Frieza's henchmen. This corresponds to Dragon Ball Z episode 120. As far as movies go, the last time this trope was used was in the first Broly movie when we discovered that his power level was 10,000 as a baby. As far as other movies go, DBZ movies 1, 2, 3, and 5 also have power levels based on supplemental materials such as the movie pamphlets. On a side note, the DS game clocks Brawly's power at just under a million, which is hilarious to think about and probably irritated a few of the hardcore Brawly fans out there. Now, during the Majin Buu saga when Goku faced Yakun, Bobby D and Darbara speak of a different form of power level called Kiri, and they measure Goku's at 3,000 and Yakun at 800. We are never told the origins of the quote Kiri power level, but it's more than obvious that they have absolutely nothing to do with the power levels that the scouters picked up. Other than what I just said, any other power levels are 100% pure speculation. Now, some of the power level guys on the web are obviously better researched and more thought out than others. Some utilize the multipliers for the various transformations that were found in some of the Daizen shoes and things like that, but the problem with using multipliers is that the character's base power level also rises as the series progresses. So, without an actual authoritative guidebook from Toriyama or even Toei, it's once again just a guessing game. The origins of battle power in Dragon Ball correspond to the beginning of the Saiyan arc in the manga and at the start of the Dragon Ball Z TV series. With Dragon Ball Z, Toriyama's storytelling slowly began to drift away from the mystical and magical themes found in Dragon Ball to the more technological, science fiction style of Dragon Ball Z, and of course, the Scouters are a good representation of that technology. At this point, Yu Kondo, the man whom inspired Toriyama to eventually create Frieza, took over the role as his editor from Torishima. Although no data out there officially credits Kondo for the creation of power levels, it may have been his idea, but we don't know for sure. Now, of course, Dragon Ball wasn't the first or the last series to use this concept. As the series progressed, power levels as a plot device began to mirror one another. Usually it was like this Villain pushes button on Scouter, reads a power level, character raises his hidden power, villain is surprised and usually scared, rinse and repeat. 
So when Frieza transforms into his second form and reveals that his battle power is at 1 million, it's supposed to shock the audience that he's so much higher than anybody else. The bottom line is this. Fans have debated and had flame wars over power levels for years, and I feel like they missed the point. The Z Fighters have all learned how to mask their power and hide their true potential. So in battle, a scouter against a guy who can mask their true power is utterly useless. The fact remains, power levels are a plot device, a way of moving the story along, and should not cause you to hate your friend because he says one thing and you say another. If you're going to debate over who's the strongest character in the series, do it based on how impressive they look and how quickly and efficiently they finish their opponent off, more so than just some random arbitrary numbers on the internet. Of course, we all know who the strongest really is at this point. At the end of the day, despite the flame wars and keyboard jousts on the web, the ironic thing about power levels in Dragon Ball is that they don't matter. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you down the road. Remember to subscribe, and also follow me on Twitter and other social media, check out my website, and communicate with me directly.